Welcome to devlog number 7. I'm Jason, game designer and environment artist on Hunters Uprising. Ignore the current state of the residential area. It is currently having a big redesign, so it's a bit of a mess. This is more to show gameplay mechanics and the gameplay loop that's been worked on so far. So if I press M now in the current build, ignore the animation as well. It's very rudimentary in our first prototype uh, that we've been building for actual gameplay use. We can bring up our map. If we can move our camera down to have a look properly, we can look up and kind of see over our map a bit more, look down. At the moment, we can see the two red icons on the edge of the map on the north and the east. Those are our available extraction points in this current match. And this PDA will actually beep once we're near a clue. So if I, I know where the clues are, so I'll head towards it. Of course, keeping in mind, it's all very early in the prototype phase. So there's a lot of tweaking and tidying up to do but there we go and it will take us to our laptop we press f that put red x is where the boss isn't and then we just got to look where the boss might be through those red x's marking where we we don't need to check now because we know the boss isn't there you can still go there and check for loot but at the moment for as a placeholder we just got x's there so with our map marked off like that we can go find another clue or by chance run into a boss location for the bounty now the school isn't one that's crossed off just over the road so i'm going to go check in there while it's daylight as i don't think i have a torch at the moment uh, just to see if that is where a boss is located just pull out my gun quick and we'll run up there with quite a few zombies on the way So the roads we were using were PCG roads and we had a massive issue and we've had to delete all the roads uh, as it was caused in um, a severe replication issue. So that's all being rebuilt at the moment and, and replaced down. They're just not in this build currently. Oh, we've got a storm coming. Let's get indoors quick. Okay, so visibility, as you can see, is very minimal in here. Um, I don't know if that zombie's going to try and push in. What we're probably going to do is add a flashlight functionality to the back of this PDA, this tablet. So you'll have always some kind of basic flashlight in the dark if you have no gear uh, to see if you get caught out in the dark. That's not implemented just yet, but that's that's the plan. Uh, I'm trying to find the clue and the zombies are coming in. Ah, get out of the way. Oh my god, all the zombies are coming. Okay, the school was too dark and spooky, so I've moved around and gone to the hospital to see if I can find a clue here. Uh, there should be a little bit more light inside the hospital, as this has a generator, and a bit more power going on inside the zone. So let's run inside. We might even find a boss here. I'm not sure yet. Let's have a look. Yep, okay, he's in there. So we can see the, the, the werewolf is in there. Um, we definitely need to change that werewolf model, but he's, uh, yep, that, that's definitely where he is. So let's see if we can kill him quick. And this is obviously for testing purposes, so he may die a bit quicker than he will by the end of the game. Oh, well, there we go. We've killed the werewolf. We've aggroed a load of zombies upstairs from the gunshots. But if we walk towards the werewolf now, we can loot the werewolf. And it gives us a one minute timer. So we pressed F on him and now the timer's going down. So we're now got a one minute timer and we're collecting the bounty. Keeping in mind, this is very much prototype. There'll be fancy things going on right now. Uh, but we're still very early in development. And this is our, our bounty collection in prototype. What essentially is going to happen is going to attach a, um, a harvesting um, me mechanism to the body. And it's going to cut out... Uh, the heart or a part of the, the body that we need to get out of the zone and then we've got a 10 minute timer to get it out uh, otherwise it, it decays and loses its value so while we're waiting for this timer to just finish up here of course we can still see our blood trails work and you can track a player with a bounty via via this way um, i will show how a bounty is tracked uh, when danny joins me shortly but first we'll just get the bounty here and we can loot up and there's two bounties on a boss and we can drag it and put it into our bounty pouch which will be visible on the outside of the player via a bloody pouch, which I don't think we got on the player just yet. And then, of course, once we've got our bounty equipped, we want to extract as quick as possible for the maximum reward. And, of course, our bounty decay concept 
is to kind of try and negate anybody from camping once they've collected the bounty in corners with shotguns. You've got to move to get the reward. If you don't move, it's going to decay away and you're not going to get the reward. So this is one of our concepts to try and get people to move more and keep the game flowing in more of a natural way. So now we've got the bounty, we can see every boss location is crossed off and we know that there's no more bosses to collect and everybody on the server will be alerted of this. And if we can see on my blue triangle there where my location is, we should have every now and then a little signal indicating to all the players that we are carrying the bounty. There we go. And that happens every 15 seconds or so. So it doesn't give it a, an accurate uh, location of the bounty and the player, but it, it will give you an idea of where they're kind of heading. So with that awesome Beast Finder 1.0, we can zoom into the map as well, get a bit more detail with a middle mouse click. Later on, we will be able to move around the map with a mouse click. We're going to have a two-handed mode that will go full screen, and you'll be able to have a mouse click around the screen and go to different tabs like your missions that you've uh, been sent in and accepted for NPCs. But at the moment, this is just for our testing purposes with the boss gameplay loop. But what we'll do now is switch over to multiplayer and watch Danny with a bounty and see if we can track him across the map, see if we can find him. No, this is solo, so we're in uh, our, our separate solo teams. And then obviously this is just for testing purposes. Later down the line, this will just be a, a lobby you'll get matchmaked into and put into solo or teams with your friends that you've squatted up with on the menu. And But this is just for our testing purposes so we can get everybody in a server and then, then test. So I'll start the game. Right, let's go see if we can find this bounty. Uh, it's getting dark, so good job we came here and got a flashlight. <laughs> yeah, true. Okay, let me see. I think here's some laptops in here. Blue? Yeah. This one. I can actually hear your beeping. <laughs> nice. <laughs> yeah, there's the big boy. Definitely need a slimmer, scarier looking one. He's a bit of a teddy bear. Yeah. Oh yeah, I'll put the meat grinder on. All right, the time is going down. Can we see it? Oh yeah, you can just see the meat, the uh, chest grinder on, on the front there. Oh, nice. Yeah, I've also made it like if it's lying on its front, it should be on its back. And if it's... Yeah, so it's visible that it's doing something and attached to its chest. Yeah. So I take it. Uh, yeah, you take it, and I'll look at my map and see if it updates. Yep, I've got all crosses. Oh, I can see your oh, logo. It does. Yeah, yeah. So if you run straight ahead there towards residential, and I'll stay here and watch your little symbol go further and further away from me that we're tracking you for the bounty on the map. <laughs> nice, I can actually see you for like that second moving in real time. Nice. Nice, down near the school now. <gasps> You're not going to try and extract, are you, without... Oh, my God. Oh, yeah, then your time is going. Yeah, they're not going to gonna... have five minutes to get out once you've extracted with a bounty. No! <laughs> I'll wait for you. Maybe also grab a bounty. Oh, oh yeah, there's another one on him, isn't there? Forgot he yeah. had two. Okay, I've got a bounty. Let's get out of here. So for those of us who saw our previous devlogs know our laptop's a little bit more complicated than just pressing F to collect a clue. We have the whole functionality built since the beginning of the year with our laptop concept where you can actually interact with the laptop. You can click buttons. We can join servers and that in this menu here. But this will actually be utilized as well for access codes. You'll be able to check through like documents and things like that and, and read up and get an access code for a door. Of course, this is going to be extremely high risk for reward because once you're in this laptop, you're not going to be able to see your surroundings. Audio will still work, but you won't be able to see what's coming up behind you or anything like that. But we do want to make these key code access points really worth your time and your risk. So just imagine when you're looking at this laptop that you're looking through documents on somebody's laptop in their house or in a bunker or something like that. And you'll get, oh, that, that key code's for that door. This, but, but remember that, don't forget. And you're telling your mates and then you go and use that key code. So this whole functionality is working. This was one of our first concepts that we, we came up with. And we're looking forward to, to getting it actually working fully after we've got the gameplay loop uh, clue laptops uh, working correctly. 
Of course, there still is a chance for the clue. We might change it to maybe like um, a lit up radio. Maybe a green one would be an active clue and a red one would be a deactivated clue spot. So maybe like a radio kind of stack or something like that and then use the laptops for this functionality for, for key codes for doors. We'll have to conversate on that. But do let us know in the comment section below your thoughts and which way we should go with this. We're all for community feedback and we're super transparent, of course. So do let us know in the comment section below your thoughts. And, you know, somebody might come up with an idea we didn't think of. So now we're going to go over our point of interest reworks that myself and Rabbit have been working on. As you may remember from our previous devlog, we were starting the work on rebuilding the residential area as well as downtown. And we've made some great progress. In the residential area, as many of you know, I've been working with the amazing prop house assets. I've got all of my houses placed where they needed to be. I've placed new roads and started to add more debris and aging to all of the areas. There is definitely still some work to do, but I really hope our vision is coming across in these new shots. And Rabbit has been working tirelessly on rebuilding our huge downtown area. He's got the layout that he's happy with, so now he's been filling it out with details, debris, cars, and he's even posed some new corpses for us to play with for our environmental storytelling. And that is all for devlog number seven. Of course, feel free to let us know your thoughts in the comment section below or join our game's Discord for discussions on ideas you may have. We pride ourselves on being extremely transparent and take on all feedback, good or bad. Links can be found in the description. Don't forget to hit that like button and share the video to help get our project known and wishlist Hunters Uprising on Steam. But most of all, thank you for watching and I'll see you peeps next time.